Oh, fun. bummer. Okay. We will just imagine what you look like. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I'll put a cartoon picture in there, Shane. <laughs> a little stick figure. Yeah. One of, the, one, of the, one of the wild things. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that sounds perfect. <laughs> Well, that's good. So we're all here. So I guess we can get started then. I'm starting to record, just so you know. Well, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Beth is going to record our meeting and we will be putting it on with the borough, I guess, on their YouTube channel. Um, we were talking to Scott. It sounds like the borough is moving to that as well. I think they've kind of always wanted to have their meetings available. And so the library, the state library system, correct me if I'm wrong, Beth, um, uses this Blue Jeans app. So as long as we yes. can it and Beth can record it, then um, then Scott said that was perfectly fine to then just provide it to the public for whoever, because no one else had said they wanted to be in on this call, correct, Beth? No one had. Correct. Yeah, we didn't get anybody else asking to participate. Okay, and that's okay. So we'll have it out there, and if anybody has questions, they can they can reach out to us. But before we get started, I want to welcome Wendy, our newest board member. Hi. Wendy Hudak. <laughs> and Wendy, I don't know if you've met everyone. You've talked to Deb and to Matt when we did, and to Beth when we did our interviews. Shane, you can't see, so just imagine Shane, Hi, Shane. looking like, <laughs> Shane Michael looking like a wild thing. Um, and then we have Heather <laughs> as well. And Heather just joined us a couple of months ago. So Hi, the Heather. two of you oh, will... Um, if Heather, have you, if you've not been sworn in yet, it should happen not yet. Okay, so it may be June then. So I apologize for the delay, but that's through the borough, and we'll get that done soon. But and, and, and as a reminder, you can certainly uh, offer an opinion on things, um, Heather and Wendy. You're just at this point uh, uh, need to refrain from voting. Okay. So the only thing I think tonight that we will be voting on would be our minutes. So does anyone else have any comments or are there any, um, we don't have staff questions yet, any comments or anything? Anyone wants to, announcements? Do you have anything important like you're wearing new pants tonight? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> So if no, no one has anything at that point, then we can move on to approval of our minutes. Thank you, Deb, for putting those together for us. Does anyone have questions or anything? Um, I think there's a, I have a couple on the uh, minutes, although I can't find them in front of me. Um, <clears throat> the Scott's last name. Yeah, the only thing right. I noticed was Scott. He's not, um, there he is. His He's last not name fully. is Bodie. Yes. Bodie. F O D I. Oh. Yeah. Deb, if you want, I can make that correction. Okay, thank you. And then um, just some of the wording on this. Um, I guess the, the board noted that the fools are not sending their annual letter. The board discussed their rationale behind this decision. Man, I, do we do we want to put that out there like that? I mean, I guess it's not really our it's not really our call on their rationale, or you know, if someone from the fools is looking at that, do we want them saying why are they, you know, why are they questioning our rationale? Um, oh, I guess so. So, are you suggesting just on that? are you suggesting just taking the line out and just leaving it as the board noted the fools are not sending their annual letter? Yeah, I'd get rid of that second sentence for sure. Okay. So what do you guys all think? Deb, are you okay with that? Shane? Well, I, yeah. uh, perhaps we could say the board understands their rationale oh, behind yeah. this decision. Okay. Well, I mean, I, do, do we know their rationale? Yeah, yes, we, they, yeah. yes. Yeah, we talked they, about um, they did talk about it. They don't want, uh, they didn't want to send something out when people were struggling financially mm -hmm. right now. They felt that it was inappropriate. Okay, so I mean, I, don't, I, I guess I what, still would. What, whatever you also. want, whatever you feel we need, Matt, we can we can do. If you want that sentence stricken, we can certainly do that. I don't think it adds or subtracts or says anything. Like I think it's okay if we take it out because the what we we did note, and we talked about the fact that they weren't sending their letter. But I guess I don't think it's necessary to 
expand on it would it wouldn't it wouldn't impact our our minutes in any way yeah okay fine with what me. do you think shane is that okay with you yep it's fine with me okay okay so does anyone else have other questions or items on the minutes Nobody else? Okay, so those of us who can vote, the four of us, um, we need a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I will make that motion. And we need a second as who, well. Who was that, Shane? Was that you who made the motion? No, that was Matt. Matt. Oh, I'll Matt. Second. Okay. I'll second it. And Matt, oh. Shane will second. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, were there any staff questions, Beth, that were submitted? Uh, no. Okay. Okay, so no staff questions, that's good. And we do have a report from Karen. So she's been busy, she and, and Beth, Wendy, for, um, for your understanding as well. The two employees who have stayed on through the closure have been Beth and Karen. There are two full-time employees. So they've both been working from home and um, <laughs> have been working themselves diligently. The other staff members have been furloughed at this point. So the report that we have from Karen is everything that she's been able to do from home um, and online. So does anyone have questions? She's been, she's been doing an awful lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think it, um, I, have you guys seen her on Facebook? Her no, and, well, I'm not. Uh, you heard I her saw cat. her on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dudley, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's been pretty good. Yeah, she's Very been doing story times. Yeah. You know, the, the cat cracks me up. <laughs> her cat's so much calmer than mine. <laughs> well, mine is not here right now, but I can't believe it because usually she's walking back and forth on my desk. So if you see a tail, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> So no, that's good. So she got, um, both of you finished your mandated reporter training, mm -hmm. which is not an easy thing to go through. So that's good. And that's good for three years? Yes. Okay, so that's good. Um, so it seems like she's taking advantage of anything that she can do, any any continuing ed things she needs to get, any whatever she can do, she's been making available online and you know, most of the conferences where we would go for training have been, well, all of them have been canceled. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to take advantage of the ones we can do online. That's good. That's a good. So but, anybody um, have any questions on Karen's? I just, uh, what was up with Barbara? It said she had a hospital stay. Um, it, it was a combination of medicine, high blood pressure, um, that sort of thing. I, I'm not allowed to go into a lot of detail. Um, but she's out of the hospital now and she's better, but it had to do with her blood pressure. Okay. So I sent a card on behalf, I wanted to let you guys know, I just sent a, a thinking of you card on behalf of the board, because if, if, if it was something private, she didn't want, <coughs> we just thought it would be nice to let her know that we're thinking of her and supporting her, so. Yeah, that was nice. Yes, that's good. So that's good. Okay, so that's it. Anything else? Um, from the staff that you know of, Beth, or? I think uh, we have a staff meeting Friday, a virtual staff meeting, and I have to go over with them all of the things that we need to do to prep um, for even curbside delivery when that starts. Right. And we're supposed to be, we have a big meeting, countywide meeting tomorrow, where that's, everything's gonna be finalized for us for the first phase of yellow. Um, but we're not going to be ready with any kind of service probably till the beginning of June. Yeah, I would think so because you, I mean, we'll get to that too later on, but you, what we'll figure with the cleaning, I mean, I know you said the mm -hmm. library is, is COVID-19 cleaned, but still there's a mm -hmm. lot to prepare for, to make sure we're ready to go. Yeah. And some, go ahead. Beth, when you talk about the staff meeting on Friday to prep for the curbside service, are you talking about all of the staff or just the ones that have not been furloughed? All of the staff. Okay. Because I do um, all staff meetings every other week, and then every week I meet with the different people who do programming, um, 
and things like that that are more specialized. So all staff meeting. Thanks. Very good. Okay, uh, Beth, yeah. you're up. Yes. Um, I, I tried to remember everything that I've been doing. A lot of meetings. You wouldn't think so, but there are because there's so much we have to get approval for to do. You saw my um, chart, the progression for reopening, and I have to file it with the state and everything. Um, so that's that took a lot of time to do. That took a lot of time. That was very detailed. It was very detailed. Yeah. So I've been working on that and um, uh, trying to get ready for the PC deployment, which will happen in June. Um, the facilities thing that I've been working on with Carnegie Library that we're doing virtually right now um, with one of three prototypes. So a lot of stuff like that going on, plus doing my my uh, bedtime stories. So, Which are very appreciated. <laughs> Next week is mostly Winnie the Pooh, just saying. I still love Winnie the Pooh. So do Tigger. I. Tigger, yes. Tigger too. Tigger too. That's my favorite character, I think. I like Piglet. I don't know who I like better. I used to call we used to call Sean Tigger. Aww. Because he was very bouncy. <laughs> bouncy, 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 jancy. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> Maybe with the red hair, he sort of had that, you know. That oh color. yeah. But yeah. <laughs> So does anybody have any questions about anything I put in there? How about on the um, the facilities maintenance um, prototype project? Um, I guess, is there, uh, are there things that we can leverage as a group of libraries as far as, you know, maybe doing, you know, a study of the buildings? Um, you know, I know you know, kind of there's, there's different, you know, different issues with different places, but is there, you know, any anything there we can sort of leverage, um, you know, for, for more? I, th I think so. I think one of the things we're going to be able to leverage is um, Carnegie Library probably gets a bigger discount as a, a huge system for repairs and purchases and those sorts of things that they're going to share with us. Um, and I think since we're the prototype, um, probably going forward, getting a building assessment um, is one of the things they're looking at for the older buildings. So yes, there are things that we're going to be able to take advantage of. That's fantastic. Okay. It'd be good if someone had, um, you know, library experience or could see, you know, our buildings next to each other. Um, Instead of having one person, you know, look at it separately and say, you know, this, that, you know, this is wrong or that. Right. Wrong. We could put mm -hmm. them together and say, this is wrong with everything or these need to be paired. Right. And to be able to do a contract that covers um, all of those places as opposed to always paying a higher price because you're a standalone. Yep. Okay, good. Good. That's great. Um, did, now, did you meet with Scott today? Yes. Um, he We did a walkthrough to see where we needed um, sneeze guards, and um, we have to, like, break apart some of those areas where we have clusters of computers and things. Um, it's just not safe, you know, having them. Before, it didn't matter, but now we're going to, like, spread them further apart. Um, so he did a walkthrough with us and talked to us about what he's going to be able to do for us from the borough perspective. Okay. Is there anywhere um, that's not usable? Any the downstairs. Be able to be used? I think the downstairs area is probably going to be pro problematic for a little while, um, just because it's so open. So I think we're probably going to have to limit people to the first floor for a while, because we, whenever there's people there, you have to clean when they're gone. Uh, you have to monitor use of the bathroom, clean when people use it. So the downstairs would just be difficult at this point. Okay. So I guess just use the upstairs bathrooms? Is that... I, you know what, there are some libraries that aren't even opening their bathrooms, so. Well, that's what makes it so hard. Like, yeah. I mean, I know you said like our library is COVID clean now, but 
Ooh, that's, well, I guess that'll be, that's something that everybody's dealing with. So mm -hmm. I like that, um, the, the personal protective equipment that the PPE, I'm glad that mm -hmm. that'll be bought by the borough. So that won't be something that will have to come out of our budget. So that's, that's really good to know. Whatever is defined as that, that'll be great. Mm -hmm. We, so I think one of the other areas, Matt, that, that we're worried about is Karen's desk. Um, yeah. She's right out in the middle of the children's department. Uh, we were laughing. We were saying we just like put her in a hazmat suit and stick her back there, you know, or, or build like a, a fort around it, you know. So we're, we're talking about that, too. And the reason she's in the middle, so she's a sight line to the teen and then the, the uh, younger children's side. Um, so, yeah, we were we're still struggling with that, but we'll figure something out. I know it's tough. Like when you and I were talking, Beth, when children are there by themselves, I mean, adults are one thing, you know, you can say, right. All right, we're going to have this computer open and this space closed or whatever. But for kids, they don't have a clue. And no. if, like, and for Karen being back there and being able to, to police that in a way is so important, but I don't know, it'll, it'll, the, the kids will be tough. And like you and I talked, it's like, well, do we say, I wonder what the state will suggest if they will suggest, I don't know, do, do kids come in with an adult? I don't know. At least that's true. While, you know, I don't know. And they, they hang all over each other. Wendy, you can probably testify to that. They just kind of like lean on each other when they're doing stuff. So. I know. They How do. about limiting the number of people in the building? That's one of the things I'm thinking about. Um, doing that and like posting times and I think we're going to have to set some limits. Is there a capacity for the library? The first floor has a capacity for 200. Downstairs, the three meeting rooms have a combined capacity of 120. Um, and then we've got two other, three other rooms off of that that are staff rooms. Um, oh, and then the squirrel's nest, which is another thing that we're trying to grapple with. You know, do you open that by appointment only? So I guess, Shane, to answer your question, probably 400 total in the building. Wow. Mm, I know, and we know yeah, by looking at our, our number. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, what's what would our number be then if we need to if we need to restrict it? Are we like if we've got you know five staffers in the building, do we mm -hmm. have to restrict it to like 15 or 20 people on the first floor? Because yeah, is there any you know. is there any guidance like by square foot or anything? Well, one of the things I saw was two people for every thousand feet. So in our building, we have an eleven thousand square foot building. It would be twenty two people. Mm -hmm. and that includes wow. staff. And that would include staff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. How how are you going to keep track? How would you keep track of that? <sighs> Uh, that's another thing to think of. I think we would probably have to keep the doors locked and let people in at the doors. The downstairs would be locked down completely. Yeah, because I can't imagine any other way. If the doors are open, people will come in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we do timed visits or is that just too much? No, that's actually what I was thinking of. Like, you have an hour to use the computer or something like that, or two hours to use the computer. That's one of the scenarios I'm looking at. Um, and you're, I think that's the only way is to monitor the door timed visits. You know, when your time's up, you'll have to, you know, go. We have the ability to shut down the computers from the desk, you know, so if it's two hours, you can shut it, you know, warn them and then shut it down. Ugh. It's so hard when you think about everybody who uses the library. You know, it's not like we have one demographic group that goes into that library. You know, when we're mm -hmm. servicing the entire community for every need we could possibly think of, and it really makes it tough cutting it off, you know, because you don't want to be cutting off that one person who's trying to fill out a job application. Right. You know, you know what? And it, go, it goes against all our training. Um, and what we're trying to achieve with no barriers, access for everyone. It's really hard. It really makes it difficult. So that's that's 17 patrons, right? Right. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, 
That's okay. Sorry. Welcome aboard. So, do you, Lindsay, do you know Wendy Hudak? And you know, you know Heather because you've been in our meetings with Heather before. Yeah. So yeah. Wendy Hudak is Heather. our newest Hi. board member. Hi. Lindsay was our Hi, Wendy. old board Hi. member. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> council, but yeah. Hiding my hair still. So <laughs> That's okay. I'm Welcome. sorry I interrupted. Sorry. I'm just gonna. I'll just. I'm just here. Oh, we're glad you're here. We're glad you're there. <laughs> we were just talking about the difficulties of when the time comes, and it will be very interesting to see what the state decides as far as how to reopen. But we said, you know. Best said, but we're going against, when you think about limiting the number of people in the door, limiting the time on a computer or limiting something like that, we're going against everything that they're being trained to do. And that, so it, it makes it a challenge, but we'll, the good thing is we're, we're all in this together and we have other libraries and communities going through the same thing and we'll figure it out. And it's yeah. a temporary situation. Yeah, yeah. So it will, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, go back to normal eventually. And Lindsay, I wanted to say Scott did a walkthrough with us today through the building to look at where we can put um, sneeze guards and that kind of stuff. Okay. And and he told us, and it made me feel so good, he said the only building I'm worried about is your building because the public doesn't have access to other borough buildings. Um, so and I was really glad to hear that. He seems very um, in tune with mm -hmm. you guys and what you need and hopefully too, like I know one worry was like that you guys don't become a daycare center as well. Exactly. Uh. Well, I kind of, I may have, I may have planted that in his ear as well when we were talking about that and um, just talking about our meeting and, and how, um, that we were going to use the same format we did last month that was that the state uses and everything but that we're recording it now as well so it can be on the website for anybody but just, but talking, just about, talking about yeah, yeah how, how when the time will come for the library to open making him aware that lots of people do well, bring their do children, bring their children there. there yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. are looking for something to do right and yeah, kids, yeah they're independent enough that they mm -hmm. can do some things on their own, so they will be there by themselves. But right. yeah, did we lose Shane? No, I'm still here. Uh, oh, okay. You, uh, I mean, the Superman. Little square is going away. Okay. <laughs> I, that, that, is there any like time frame for opening? Have you heard any? Is it like a month, two months, next week? They're thinking. Well, it's not going to be uh, nothing until June. Um, Right, and that could just be curbside service and um, like a phone reference, having staff in there for phone reference. Um, everything that we returned us, we have to disinfect. It's such a, a nuisance getting uh, ready to go. And there's no shipping or processing from the main center in the West End yet. Um, and that's going to take a lot of time to bring back up online. And so the state, the way the state is talking, they're thinking end of summer before we really open for patrons. Um, they're afraid of reopening and then having to close again. Well, that's it. That's what we, yeah. I feel like everybody's probably thinking of that. Like maybe we'll have a reprieve, but it could very well come back again in the fall. Uh, so that means we got to check out a lot of books while we can. That's yeah, right. that's right. <laughs> Did I send you guys out the number of holds in the system? It's like out there in the system. Yes, it's re, it's uh, no, 107,000. Oh, 107,000. system wide? System wide. Oh, okay, okay. So getting them all geared up again is going to take a long time. Oh, yeah. That's what I wonder with the West End, with that hole with, their, the, with the, um, what's that? The processing called? center, Thank yeah. <laughs> But yeah, with all that stuff, I mean, wow, yeah, that's going to be a lot. Are you going to need to put markers on the ground, you know, like six yeah. feet? Yeah. We're probably going to use some kind of tape or something um, to mark distance from like the circ desk and that sort of thing. What about masks? Will people have to have masks on coming in? Yes. 
masks on coming in. Staff will have to have masks on. How do you enforce that? I think at the door, like letting people in at the door. And you had written too, Beth, about because there are some people like children under two or there are certain instances, but it's figuring out, okay, obviously a child under two, you can tell they're under two. Right. If someone has another health condition that may require them not to wear one. Right. Yeah. And we have no idea what green is going to mean, you know, what the governor is going to say. This is what green means. Maybe it will mean no masks. We don't know. We're just all kind of basing what we're doing off of yellow, the requirements for the yellow phase. Right. Hmm. We can uh, let me know what you want to do with floor graphics. We can uh, we can make some floor graphics, set them up every six feet to the park. Well, you can make a Winnie the Pooh and the Tigger. <laughs> we can do, we can do that. Yeah. Stop here. Tigger says we'll stand here. Or something. Yeah. That would yeah. be cute. Um, I've got some uh, some COVID specific um, signage. If you want to do that, um, we're doing some work for uh, for Original Mattress Factory um, for some of their signs for their COVID signs and keeping people apart. So. If you want to That's go through some of that stuff. No, how does one oh, yeah. shop for a mattress when it's <laughs> still lie on the mattress and figure it out if it's comfortable for them? That sort of sounds strange. Yeah, you know what? They're um they're they're putting covers on all of their mattresses and all of their pillows. Oh, so everybody who okay. comes in, if you want to try it out, you got to take take all their stuff off. Um, they're limiting the oh, people man. in the showrooms. Yeah, mm -hmm. they've got um. They've got a sign they're putting outside. They're limiting how many people can go in their um, stores. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's all that same stuff that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. well, that's a good start. Um, Beth, can I ask something about the community service project? Yes. Um, will this be something that once as we're into yellow or I'm trying to figure out at what point in the list of things that you're doing, this would fall. Cause it's such a wonderful thing, but at the same token, we're not giving out food, but where, like, where does that fall and everything? We, well, what I've had to do is pre-order everything, although it can't be shipped right now, but pre-order it. So let's say the end of June, we'll be ready to, go with the actual uh, take and go bags. Uh, we'll drop them off with the food bank in Verona. Um, but I, what I had to do was get, I have to spend out the grant by the end of June. So I had to order the books and Ingram is going to bill me ahead of time. And then Stephanie and Karen are gonna work on their part of it, which is other parts to put in the bag and maybe some virtual programming where we talk about food prep and that sort of thing. Um, even things like articles about uh, how do you work, how do you cook with your kids? Like tips for cooking with your kids. Yeah, that's great. Even if there's no food, that's wonderful. It's a great start, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's good. it was going to be food, but we had to drop that part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's good. And you know, I was going to ask you too about so for Wendy and what well, Heather, you may. We, I think we've probably talked about this since you've been on board, but um, Beth got selected to this governor's advisory committee, which was supposed to meet every quarter. And it's yes. really an honor and we're very proud of her and so excited that she's been able to do this. And then COVID hit. <laughs> oh, and now it's like, ah, oh, and I was wondering what they're doing, if they'll do something virtually or if you'll be able to still connect with them. I hope so. I mean, that thank you. They canceled the May meeting and they have a July meeting still out there, but I'm thinking they'll probably opt for a virtual meeting. And it's going to be so different from what we had planned before because we were going to work on the regulations and the code. Um, and now it's probably going to be funding, you know, more focused on funding than the code. Well, does anyone else have any? That sounds like fun. Else? I know, I know. <laughs> wow. One more thing. Love working through government regulations. Uh, yeah. So, does anyone else have anything on Beth's report? Any questions or comments or? Do we do we want to talk about the plan now, or do we want to talk about the plan? 
Oh later. yeah, it's up to you. You want to just do it now? Yeah, let's just do it now. Um, I mean, a lot of this, will some of this be altered based on your meeting tomorrow, Beth? Um, well, it's probably, and then it will change if things change in the environment. Okay. Uh, if we run into a problem with something that's suggested in there. Okay. Um, but I, a lot of what I took in there was um, from the statewide directors meetings. So I'm hoping not to alter it too much, but that's the idea going forward. Okay, I'm just writing a couple of notes. Okay, all right, so go. If anybody has anything you guys wanna talk about, um, this is about Beth's, um, the draft about the opening plan. If anyone has comments, I don't know, Beth, if you wanna to start to go through it or anyone has specific I guess, questions, I, mean, I don't know. You know. We don't need to go line by line, but. No, no, I mean, I, you know, my thought, you know, a couple things, um, and you've already talked about a couple things, but like hours, um, if we're just doing book drops, are we gonna reduce our hours? You have in there sort of like 10.30 to 6.30. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking that's more like staff time with the library drop yes. off being from like 12 to five or? Right, you're, you're yes. I, I was thinking like a, a window like that, 12 to, to five for people to uh, call us, say they're coming down for their books, you know, do the curbside delivery, but we're gonna need staff at the beginning and the end of that to shelve, to get things ready, packed and ready to go, to make phone calls. Um, so yeah, you're gonna need a lot of staff time at the beginning and the end. And they can only work so many hours per shift. They want them, you know, only there for a certain amount of time then off so they can take their mask off. And there's, they're really warm to work in. Um, and then clean, you know, clean after they use the bathrooms, that sort of thing. Um, how about temperature? Are you gonna take people's temperature or have a, uh, you know, like a thermometer there? Um, I'm going to have, yes, uh, Scott bought us a thermometer. I'm going to have a temperature station where they can take their temperature, record it so we can see it. Um, and every time they come in, they're supposed to take their temperature. Okay, so every day. Would that be, would day that day be day. staff and patrons, Beth? No, so far it's just staff. Okay. So this, is just for the, this is just for the yellow phase. So right. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping they don't need to do the public, but who knows? Right. Well, that's what I'm wondering too. If they would require, like, if we have 22 people in the building, would they require you to take a temperature of everybody <sighs> in? I don't know. I'm just going to think, Wendy, you're the, you're the Dr. Light. <laughs> that's what I call you. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I mean, that came up. I had to go to one of the schools today, and that came up. It, that's a lot because you want a non-contact thermometer for one and right so hopefully they'll give guidance on that it, it looks like most likely if the kids return to school that's what will happen everyone has their temperature take you're asked you know um for instance my husband works in in the, the va in the hospital he's at he gets his temp taken do you have a cough are you short of breath do you feel ill and then move on so you know but I don't know. That's a good question. I can see maybe everyone having it taken. I, you know, you trust that people won't come ill, but you, it's sometimes maybe people don't recognize that either. So, are you meeting with the, the county tomorrow, you said, or the state? Yes. I mean? It's the yeah. county's tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So that might be something to ask. Yeah. Are those the forehead thermometers? Uh, yes, yeah, there's different kinds and there's very expensive ones. I don't think those would be needed, but you know, you don't, you'll go through tons of probes otherwise if you get a, a normal thermometer. How, ac how accurate are they? I mean, are they close to like putting a thermometer in your mouth or? Oh, the forehead ones are just non-contact. They go right close to the forehead and, and they they zap a temperature at you. So they're fairly reliable, enough to know if you, you're running a fever. So, and you don't need any probes or anything, so. Even in hot weather? Yes, <laughs> yeah. So I apologize too, Wendy, when I introduced you, I meant to ask you to tell a couple 
a little bit about yourself. So that Matt and Deb and Beth and I had interviewed Wendy, so we knew a little bit more about her. But the others of you, maybe not. Wendy, would you mind saying a little bit about your background? And um, I work for um, the Pittsburgh Public Schools for the Health Services Department. I'm a nurse practitioner for them. I've been there 13, almost 14 years now. So, um, you know, we service a few different schools each on our assignment. So um, that is, I guess, you know, we're looking at reopening, but we also will have to get lots of state guidance as well. So mm -hmm. that's why the thermometer reference, <laughs> I get the temperature yeah. reference, yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, we have 26,000 kids, so it's like, do you, do you oh, have, wow. you know, cost-wise and how to do this is, but the same thing, I, I look for them if they do go back to go to a hybrid status, uh, you know, to keep the occupancy down and so forth, so. I have a question, Wendy, that might seem odd, but one thing I heard was that people that were coming in with COVID, their pulse ox was so low that um, like I had seen an article or whatever that the doctors were kind of like, how are you functioning? So I, I guess part of me since seeing that has been wondering, well, why is it such a thing about temperature? Because people are spreading this, even though they don't know they're sick, but maybe weeks beforehand, their pulse ox is dropping. Like, shouldn't I, we be checking pulse oxes? I think the pulse ox, uh, which is the oxygen saturation in your blood is more in play when they, they don't feel as sick even though they have COVID and it's maybe a few days in, if not a week or so in, and they don't feel a lot of respiratory compromise, but then you're seeing a pulse ox of below 80%, which it's like a test, the higher the better. So 98% is what most people run, 95 and above. So I, that would be something that would be later in the COVID, not later, oh, but at least okay. a few days in. So I know on the elderly and some of the nursing homes and in the hospital, they monitor that frequently, but that's once the, you know, they have the COVID. The initial symptoms, and that's even skeptical because I've read different things, 80% have fever. So not everyone has a fever, but traditionally so far what we know is fever, cough, shortness of breath. So I think that's why they're trying to roll, you know, people out. My feeling on that is if you have a fever as an adult, at least, you usually know it. You feel pretty crappy when you, when you mm -hmm. are running fever. But that is just one way. I guess there have been people in lines. Um, I'm referencing a nursing home. I know someone to work with. And the person, a dietary aide, didn't realize she had a fever, so she was sent home. But I think that's why the temperature and those questions before the pulse ox, okay. which is important, but a few days, you know, later into the disease. Okay. So. Well, thank you. Sorry I didn't ask you to say a little bit about yourself in the beginning. No, but. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be, it's a learning thing. I mean, we're just, it, there's so much changing every day on this. Yeah. I wish we could fast track a vaccine and go back to life. Oh, I yes. know. So, you know, but it, it is an evolving process and you don't know what models to believe. It's, it's mm -hmm. very confusing and frightening for people. So to be the safest is just to be clean. Masks, wash mm -hmm. your hands, mm -hmm. keep your distance. So. I miss seeing you guys in person though. Yes. I mean, our meetings, it's always enjoyable to see everybody in to interact. So I look, maybe maybe in June we'll be able to. I hope so. We can go in the big room downstairs and we can stand eight feet apart. <laughs> yeah, Beth, I have a question for you on your plan here on phase three, minimal operation when allowed by state. Uh, you're suggesting that staff place items in bags. You guys mm -hmm. need bags. Well, you know what? We bought bags, like can small canvas bags from um, Sam's Club because we were nervous to use the plastic bags that you get at Giant Eagle in places. Um, so these are brand new. They're sealed in a box. 
Um, so we're starting with that anyway. But I'll let you know if we run low. Yeah, because my plastic bag collection in my uh, pantry cupboard is, is burgeoning. <laughs> I'd like to off offload some of those puppies. Beth, when do you so, go from um, one phase to the next? Like, when do you go from one to th or two to three to four? We're, we're, ba we're basing it on um, kind of like getting things geared up. You figuring that would be the, the first couple of weeks and then like monitoring how things are, are going. So um, kind of two week increments is what we're looking at right now. I, so is that like two is yellow? Three is a little bit more greenish yellow, and four is even more green <laughs> yellow. Well, we're not That's why I look at that. Yeah, I, I think you can look at it that way because we won't be able to go green until the governor says so. But yeah, I think basically that's it. We're starting out green, yellow, and then getting into green. Exactly. But I mean, through through our whole yellow phase, there's no there's no uh, patrons in the library. Exactly. Until right. So, I mean, do you think like next week you'll have people in starting to put books away and get things cleaned up? Or do you think it'll be, you know, two weeks? Well, I'm going to open it up to the staff that if some of them want to go in and start shelving and I'm only going to have two of them in there at a time, um, that will set up a schedule for whoever wants to do it. Um, because I know I have a couple of staff members who are still afraid to come out and or even though the library has been COVID-19 clean are just nervous. So I'm going to open it up to the people who want to come out and get started doing stuff. Yeah, it's, just all, it's, all, it's all regular staff, right? It's all paid staff. It's all right. All paid staff. No volunteers. That's that's way down the road. So would that are any of our staff? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to ask about getting paid. If they came in, that's would they be, would that impact their furlough if they're getting unemployment from the state? You can work up to a certain percentage and still collect your unemployment. Okay. So they're, what they get paid will be deducted from their unemployment amount. Okay. Because they still won't be up to the <laughs> Great minds, think alike. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I did. Uh, we checked into. Um, so it's just, it's like a balancing act. Okay. with the unemployment and what they're paid because they won't be up to their regular hours for a while. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions on the draft of the opening plan at this point? Anything else for Beth? No, I, that was a good draft. Mm -hmm. That was really good, Beth. I like when I can work with colors too, like colors. <laughs> <laughs> colors are good. That's funny. Okay. All right. So I guess I'm up. Well, I don't really have anything other than Wendy and Heather. Well, Heather's been, Heather, you're not new anymore, but um, <laughs> we still have to have um, both of our newest board members sworn in. And that kind of really got, because of COVID, just kind of got pushed aside. But Scott at the borough is very well aware and is, is pushing this forward to somehow, some way, get both of them sworn in. So if it doesn't happen, if you haven't heard anything yet, Heather, from May, then hopefully by June, both of you will be sworn in. And the only bummer about that, about waiting, is that you are not able to vote, as you both know. So, But we still have a quorum with the, with the five of us that are still able to vote but um but yeah so that's that's Heather, all i have but heather's info was in our packet last week for the working work session oh good and that'll be monday finally right? yeah okay so maybe no we had the work session oh, so the work session. on the voting so it makes me wonder if she can get sworn in at the next voting session via zoom oh, oh yeah maybe. that would be good so when will the next voting meeting be should be next Is monday it? i would think okay yeah, I think so. Because last, not this Monday, the Monday before was our work session. Okay. And her stuff was definitely in there because I kept watching for it. Okay, good. Because um, Scott had mentioned that, so I was hoping, but he didn't know if he was going to be able to slide Wendy in there as well. So oh, okay. oh, if not, then oh. Wendy will be for, okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, I'll touch base with him too. Yeah, I would think that the mayor could swear you in via Zoom. 
I don't see I would why think it so. to be face to face. I mean, I was sworn in at the mayor's house at one point. Oh. So yeah, yeah so I, I would think they could the do that. House too. Yeah, we're <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's the mayor. I went to Fessmeyer's house and got sworn in. That's where I went too. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Okay, so that's good. So that's this coming Monday, right? The 18th. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'll double check with Scott on that. And then yeah, that's good. So that's all I have as far as our new members. And we're we're a full board again. Yay! Yay. <laughs> that's great. Okay, Matt, you want to talk finances? Yeah. Um <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. Um yeah, you know, we're a mess. Everything's a mess. Um you guys saw uh best notes. I'll put that in the mess. That, um, Everything's a mess. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Put it in there like three times. It's a finances are a mess. Um, Should I pass that on to uh, council? Uh, I'm sure they know. They see my name, they'll be like, oh yeah. Um. So I I don't know. Was Lindsay copied on your email today, Beth, about the rad cutting back funds? Yes, because she's still on the board list. Oh, I missed that. Okay. Oh, so, um, yeah, I did. I had hearing today. I missed, so, I missed that email. Sorry. So the um, so ACLA had sent out a note um, to the libraries that the uh, the RAD is going to be cutting uh, twenty percent. They're going to be cutting back everybody twenty percent uh, for the year. Um, but what that does, they've they are um, I don't want to say they're paid up, but they're 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 good through I think June first. Um, and yes. after June 1st, we're going to get a, a, a deduction um, in our RAD funds, and it's going to be it's going to be more than 20 percent because they're going to be making up for the rest of the year. So it's going to kind of be like 40 percent um, so that we can get everything uh, realigned. And they'll be you know reviewing that, and reviewing the tax payments, and that kind of stuff. So um, so our, our funding there, um, you know, is, is impacted. Um, I mean, we've cut a lot of costs by not having the library open. Um, so I guess, you know, I don't, I don't know that that's good or bad. It just kind of is what it is. Um, fundraising, we a good way to fundraise um, for the second half of the year, the last quarter, have a big push. Uh, I, you know, we're not allowed in the library and we can't do Booktoberfest. Um, or we can't do, I'm um, sorry, Taste of Two Towns, um, you know, which is probably not going to be able to be done this year. Uh, we're going to have to find, you know, try to find some, some different creative ways to generate some fundraising money. Um, you know, it looks like, you know, we don't, we don't necessarily have to buy books. Um, I think we should continue, you know, where, where needed, um, you know, to, to buy some stuff and, buy some other resources, but we'll just have to, you know, that's going to get cut back as well. We'll just have to be careful, you know, that we don't spend, you know, too much um, on the important stuff. So the, the state is waiving all their like mandates for how much you spend on what, which is great because there's no way we could afford to do what we've done in past years. And I think going forward, we're going to have to look at hours and you know staffing the hours uh, to be to be able to provide services through the year. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just looking at all of that. I'm going to go through and make 20 percent cuts in different areas of the budget and see what that looks like. I mean, we're going to have a lack of programming. So in that sense, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to need people quite as many people in the building. Right. Um, I guess it's going to be we're going to have to make that decision. How do you want to how do you want to cut hours? Do you want to cut across the board everybody? Um, maybe that way some of them can continue getting uh, unemployment, or do we cut? You know, are there people who don't want to come back for the right. rest of the year? Do we cut them out altogether? You know, right. so we kind of have to figure out how to balance that. Um, and then from the hour standpoint, you know, we're going to have we're probably going to reduce hours the rest of the year. Um, you know, and maybe that's no Saturdays that, that also reduces our costs for cleaning. 
um, cleaning yeah. supplies and other things. So I, um, sorry, sorry, Matt. I just thought, so we, do we got to change the air conditioning and that stuff at times? Well, we do have to like switch the air conditioning on, um, but the only time we're shutting it down is uh, Saturday through when it comes back up on Monday. Okay. And, and the reason for that is the computers. Oh, yeah. And keep them cool. Yeah. What about so the is that... reading program? Is that going to be all online? What was or that? The summer, the summer reading program. Oh, it's going to be all online. It's all virtual this year. Sorry, and this. And you guys already covered oh it. no it, nobody asked it yet and the state is um providing us with a lot of the programming the state and the county so um it's it's going to be a good program it's just going to be all online oh, okay. do uh do the kids who normally participate in it have access to computers and wi-fi <sighs> some don't so that's something we're going to have to think through we could probably loan out laptops like you would a book. I, I don't. Did the school? Did the school do that? Well, the school I, mean, I don't know what the school's done. Next year, they they have contacted the kids that have not had um, computers. They've gotten those to them, and they were talking about for next year. Like all the high school kids get computers, but they were talking about the younger kids making sure they also have something as well. So. So that's that will happen in time for next school year, but I don't know about the summer. Okay. I mean, I should, but the kids who need them now have them, but as far as the younger students, that may not be until August. Yeah, but most of the kids in our reading program are, are the younger kids, right? Right. So they're not if they don't have access. Um, yeah, and I don't know who comes to summer reading who doesn't have computer access because a lot of it was, well, at least for the adults, was you registered online and did all that stuff. Um, but I don't know. I mean, Beth, you would probably know better. There are there are some who don't. I, we're trying to make like um, create and go packets for like science projects, um, create and go pack packets for crafts. So we are trying to address that by creating things kids can take home and work on. That's great. And then if they give us their give us paperwork, we can register their uh, information online for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's good. And maybe that okay. could even be something too. I guess that's part of the whole curbside, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. kind of tying that into the summer reading program. If there are kids that don't have access to that type of thing, they might be able to, whether it's printing things off, or something like that. Would that be something we could do and they yeah. could pick it up? Okay. Yes. And in fact, some of the libraries in the risk communities like Braddock and um, Homestead are coming up with a lot of programming that we're going to take and use for those kids that don't have access to Wi-Fi and um, computers. And that would be a good question for the school too, because they would know, and I don't know what information they would be able to share with you personally, but there's a system in place, obviously, to how to reach those kids for remote learning. Oh, good. That's good to know. Because mm -hmm. they've all been reached. It's just a matter of how they're, you know, right. how they're doing information them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the only other thing I have is on the, um, on the endowment fund. Um, as of the end of April, it's down a little bit. Uh, Kind of like the rest of the stock market. Um, it's at uh, where were we? April thirtieth, like seven hundred and eighty-nine thousand. Um, so we're down around ten or twelve thousand dollars from November, from our November time frame. You know, it was great in January and February. It was up, um, and it's down now. Um, we still have about about six hundred seventy-five thousand um, dollars in the money market fund um that's being invested monthly so you know hopefully we've we've invested it um on some of these low points um so when the things get back to normal uh we, we should be okay i don't know you know i don't we sort of set this up so it'd be invested within a year 
Um, I think it was 12 months that we had talked about. I don't know if you want to push push it a little bit um, and kind of have them, you know, look at it and say, hey, you know, with this, you know, this money that's left yeah, in the well, money market fund, do we want to, you know, instead of pushing it out now over like the next eight or nine months or whatever it would be, do we want to push it out over 12 or 15? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you guys think. Um, you know, it's sort of a sort of a safety move, if you will. But right. if everything comes roaring back, you know, we may lose out a little bit. Do you think we can make money, Matt? Given you know buying up stocks now at a lower price, so that once eventually the economy is going to come back, mm -hmm. I'd love to see it hit a million dollars. I know. <laughs> Same. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think. I, I think I'd rather be safe. I think it's right. It's a, it's a, it's more of a safety thing um, rather than a risk return thing at this point. Um, you know, that that's sort of my, you know, that's sort of my thinking. That maybe if we if we call uh, Wells Fargo up and say, hey, um, you know, can we can we spread this out over the next fifteen months rather than you know whatever we have left, which I, I think is nine months, but. Um, just to be, just to play it safer. Just because there's, I think there's still risk for the next year. Yeah. Yeah, and we talked about that in the beginning about do we spread it over a year and a half? Do we spread it over a year? So, I don't know. What do you all think? Do you think, because, you know, you hate to, we'd like to have a little bit of input as far as Wells Fargo. We don't want to just say, oh, do whatever you feel like doing. But, so, what are your thoughts as, you know, what, what do you all think about something like that? Do you think it would benefit us in spreading it out a little bit more? Or, I mean, you think about it, like you said, Lindsay, right now, you know, things are a little bit lower than they have been. I don't know, but it's also kind of going up and down too. So there's no, it's, it's not like we're going to try to play the market right now, you know? I think I'd lean on the side of spreading it out more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a safe, it's a safe thing to do, and this is certainly a gift that we have. So, what you do know, you guys if think? We, we spread it out over the next twelve months. You know, it would give us a little bit of a little bit of a benefit mm -hmm. from a from a risk standpoint. And we still haven't heard back from Beth Williams about the portion of the found uh, money that they're still fighting over. So. Um, we'll be getting a portion of that. I just don't know how much. Um, so we really don't even have all of the money that we're supposed to have yet in that fund. Can we share with Wendy, Heather, I think you know this, about the last portion of that money? You want to share that, Beth, or Matt? <laughs> they, they, um, after we received these uh, annuities from a deceased community member, they found when they were dissolving his estate, his his uh, property, that there was a safe found with $500,000 in cash in it. And the executor of the estate is arguing that all the cash has transformed itself into a thing, you know, as opposed to cash, because the man who left us the uh, annuities left it to us, two humane societies, and the Heinz History Center, and we were supposed to get anything that was like cash or annuities. Well, the executor was claiming that all of a sudden this money changed into something else, and he should get it. So um, we had to bring in an attorney to help us represent the library, and the four nonprofits are in a suit right now with this gentleman in regard to this money. So, yeah, because what so did it's it almost turn final, into? But, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Oh, and they found notes from this man in his oven and in the safe in pockets of clothing, you know, saying we're different things, we're going, it's it's a, a whole story. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing, but a wonderful thing, and we'll, and we'll get to yeah. this too, but hopefully with that, when we have our endowment committee together to really look at that, that'll be, that'll be exciting. So anything else finance-wise we can what? move into talking about the endowment, but. Yeah. That'll be common. Um, I, one question. Um, so the, the Wells Fargo account currently goes to the Oakmont Carnegie Library. 
um, yes. the, I guess the name, uh, you know, entity on it. Um, and we're going to, you know, we're going to get into this here, you know, the, the memorandum of understanding and some of our bylaws and stuff like that. I was wondering, and, and Lindsay, maybe you can give us some, some of your legal advice here. Um, should, should the name on that be, uh, you know, the, I can't remember what it is. The, is it the library board of the Nonprofit. Borough of Oakmont? Is the official name of the 501c3? I'm wondering if it should go to the non, if you should have the nonprofit name on it, just to make that clear to keep it from the borough, like borough versus the nonprofit. Just because the money was yeah. given to the library. Mm -hmm. And if, yeah, and so just to be able to make sure that it stays where he intended it to stay. That's what I would yeah. think if there's well, a way to I mean, do that you, over. Yeah, and I mean, the, it's, it's the endowment is, you know, I guess owned um, by the 501c3, it should probably have the proper name on it um, just to keep it clear. So who would be so. responsible for sending that notification to Wells Fargo to make that request? Um, I've been doing well, most of the communication. Gonna, I was gonna, yeah, I guess I was going to make a motion first that do we want to um, split um, the remaining investments out over the next 12 months for the endowment fund? Yeah, can we do that? You want to make a motion and we can vote on that? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> so I'll make the motion to uh, to, to spread the, the money market um, investments to, or money market uh, distributions to investments over the next 12 months. I'll second it. Thank Shane you. seconded. Okay, all in favor of what Matt said? <laughs> Aye. Just got to raise your hand. Right? <laughs> There's not that many of us. So. Yeah. Yeah, Shane, you can't raise your hand because we won't know if you raise your hand. <laughs> Aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? Okay, so motion has passed. So we will, so Matt, will you, you'll make the inquiry then with Wells Fargo. Okay. Yeah, I, I, Beth, you want to call them tomorrow? Sure. And you can find out about doing that and figure out about changing the name on the account as well. Sure. We can, we can call ourselves whatever we want. Do we need to make a motion for that as well to change the name on the, the Wells Fargo account? We're not really, we're not changing any ownership. We're just clarifying what we are. Well, I, I think um, if, if we ask them what we need to do and then if we need to provide them, I think they already have our certificate, our 501c3 certificate, right? They have yes. Paperwork. Yes. So I mean, they have that. It's, just a, it's probably just a uh, probably sort of some an signatures edit thing because they. Yeah. Does Scott have to uh, sign yeah, off on anything and... with that? No. 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 Okay, that's like your signature and someone from the board. So who is it? Is it Beth and Matt and I that are the, the yes the signatures oh, good. Okay. on the account? That was so the only. To, yeah. yeah. So to I change it, it would probably just require. Make a yeah. Yeah. It should probably, it may just require just the three of us to sign it. So that's what I'm asking. Do we, do we need to make a motion to, or do we just wait and see what Wells Fargo says first as far as what we call that account? I think that's the smartest move. Choice two. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Then once we know that, then we can make, and we can, make the appropriate change. Okay. Sounds good? Okay. Sounds good. Yep. All right, Matt, you have anything else finance-wise? I mean, we're gonna, you know. Nope. Nope. Nothing good. Okay, and um, as far as the discussion, we already talked about Beth's, about the the reopening plan. So we already covered that, correct? Anybody else have anything to add to that? Or are we good there? Good? Okay. Um, and so about the bylaws and the memorandum of understanding. So to give um, Heather and Wendy a little bit of an update, 
there are certain things we want to be able to clarify as far as the way the library works, and please chime in as, as you need to. Um, the, the building, the borough owns the building that we reside in. And we are looking to clarify for the state's purpose, for our purpose, for the community's purpose, for funding's purpose, exactly who is responsible for what especially now that we have this endowment money available to us. The intention for the person who gave us that money was not for us to spend it on operating expenses, and that's really never the intention for an endowment fund. So we thought this is a really great opportunity to look at our bylaws, to look at the borough code, to look at our endowment, the, the, our nonprofit side, and make sure that all our T's are crossed and all our I's are, are dotted. So Deb and Matt have been working through our bylaws and some endowment wording, and we're working with the borough on that as well to make sure we kind of get that all out there. From what I understand, um, talking to libraries who have foundations or endowments, the memorandum of understanding is, is a process where you lay out what you think, um, who's responsible for what, or how money is used, those sorts of things. And then you work through it with, in our instance, it would be counsel and the attorneys that represent both counsel and the library. And then you come to an agreed memorandum of understanding. So um, even though we're working on it, it's going to be a process um, that we need to get done by the end of this year. Very nice to have the solicitor, the borough solicitor, willing to have her eye on what we're doing as well. I think that really helps to tie both together because we all want the same thing. It's just a matter of making sure for us and for those who follow us that it's all laid out. So if we can do that, I think we help everybody in that respect. But anyway, yep. so yep. Do, I don't. Do we want to talk, go through some of that, some of the bylaw information? Um, I don't know if everyone has has the three documents, Matt and Beth and Lori, I know that I sent you the uh, draft memorandum of understanding, the draft policy, endowment policy, and the draft bylaws of the Board of Oakmont Carnegie Library Board of Directors. But I don't think that, did they get passed on? Beth said that was the example from the other library. Oops, I'm sorry, what did you say, Lindsay? I only have what Beth sent that was the example from the other library that she got. I don't have what you just mentioned, Deb. Yeah, oh, Deb, I think you didn't send it out, distribute it. I think it was just like the core group who were doing the writing. I don't think everyone's seen it yet. Right. Yeah, I think the thought was for Deb and Matt and to kind of work together and even with, um, I don't know Kate at the borough yet, but just kind of working with them at first to draft some initial wording. And then once mm -hmm. that initial wording is kind of put together, then bring that back to the board and then the board and then we can look at it and ask any further questions. So what yeah. you and, and Matt had kind of put together, Matt, you had some questions and I know we all kind of had some questions. So I don't know if this is the time to talk about it or if, what do you all think? Um, I don't know. You want, you, want, you want to bore everybody? <laughs> I, I, um, I think I mean, the conversation, try, try, you know. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead, Matt. Go, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, I think it would probably be smarter for uh, the four of us to have a working meeting and to to look at the wording. Um, I know Matt that you raised some um, a question about the memorandum of, of understanding because I have it. The memorandum of understanding between Oakmont Carnegie Library and its board and the Oakmont Carnegie Library Board of Trustees. Like who are <laughs> so? Um, and I believe the intent is to have the memorandum of understanding between the Oakmont Carnegie Library Board of Trustees and the Borough Council. Have I got that right, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I don't know if it's the if it's the council or if it's just the Borough of Oakmont. Um, mm -hmm. And trying to, you know, I put a little little chart together just so we could sort of figure out who's who and what's what. 
and and some of that goes back to the um to the original um uh, the code the sections of the like not the I guess the borough code the borough the code world, yeah um, and how some stuff yeah how some things are sort of are they're, they're they're labeled but what does it mean you know the library operations versus the library building um you know and trying to understand you know all the all the moving parts um because it's all it's all one library but we seem to or the you know the document seems to define different areas of it so just trying to you know get a good understanding around that and then be able to define it and then explain how we want to do it um i mean yeah, I, thought the I, I two, think it's um I mean, I think the two, the two memos we have are, are good, but they're not quite exactly the same structure as what we're, we're under. And so we right. just need to kind of clean that up a little bit. Sure. What, what, what I did is because Beth so kindly provided samples from other libraries, I uh, basically just took the, the one um, library's memorandum of understanding and just everywhere where it said that library's name just Oakmont Carnegie Library Oakmont you know find replace that's what I did so um, yeah it it got us off the ground but we really do need to have a, a more a specific working meeting to to hash these out and I must confess Matt I did not did not take advantage of the chart that you put together um, I think I was feeling overwhelmed at that point. <laughs> I'm so busy. Yeah, no, I get it. I mean, <laughs> well, you know what? When I when I read it, I read your memo, and I was like, I was like, yeah, we. It's. I just try to, you know, in my mind, I, I try to draw stuff out so I can understand mm -hmm. where where things mm -hmm. are going, and you know, dollars, employees, um, right. programs. Where does all that mm -hmm. stuff go, right? Um, yeah. What is the what is the building versus what are operations and and why is the borough, um, you know, give the the board uh, oversight over operations but not necessarily the building, you know, things like mm -hmm. little things like that. So. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, that's yeah, good. We'll, we'll, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Yeah. yeah. So my question, yeah. I should probably know the answer to this, but as far as if we had a working meeting, um, Beth, can you shed some light as far as the sunshine law goes? And if we would get together to talk about this, is this something that we can do between now and our next meeting in June? Because it would be nice to be able to make a little bit of headway doing some homework between now and then. Yeah, I think um, Deb and, and Shane, I know you both have um, a lot of insight into the Sunshine Code, but I think, yes, as a subcommittee of the board, you know, um, charged with doing these documents, we can have a meeting via Skype or Zoom or whatever to work because it would just be a working session to try to prep for the board meeting. I agree. Yeah, I think as long as you don't have a quorum, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not you voting on any anything. decisions. Yeah. Right. 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 Just be working just through wordsmithing. The, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wordsmithing. A couple things um, in terms of what would be assigned, say, to the borough. Um, a couple of things Patty brought up that I thought were good points was, say the library shuts down, there's no more library. Have in there where that, where what endowment or what group foundation you would want that money assigned to. I and think also put it down in place somewhere. Like what property or she was also talking about trying to, which is what you're going to, Matt, like which property in the library itself, like what's the foundations, what's borough? Kind of yeah. think about it down the road. Yeah. If it ever shuts down, how does everything get broken, right. broken down? Yeah, because yeah, we've got the books and the resources that, that we may want to, you know, push the one side versus cash where we may want to push somewhere else. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we started thinking about that. But, awesome. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's hard to be specific and still be general. <laughs> right. I know, like this right. doctor's you know, book yeah. is the bird. This Dr. Seuss book is the <laughs> I know, and but it's like if we're... And sometimes vagueness is intentional as a protective device. Mm -hmm. Yes. But at least when it comes to some resources and the money part, it would be helpful 
to at least be able to say that, I mean, it helps everybody. So, yeah. Sure. Okay. So that's good. So we can work on that then yeah. between yeah. and not have to worry about, and that way we can, in, in time for our June meeting, hopefully we'll have something to at least send to the board to look at. So we've got something to read in time for, okay. Matt, how does the squirrel's nest factor into that? Um, you mean as far as an asset or reopening it during the no, yellow I mean, as far as like, I mean, do they do we do they give us money? We give them money, or do they are they part of the operations? Are they part of? The oh, um, the the squirrels nest itself is part of our fundraising efforts, and that money gets put into the general operating budget. Okay. It's deposited. Well, when it was open, it was deposited on a weekly basis and put in with the operating fund under merchandise sales. Okay. 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 I was glad I made a trip to the squirrel's nest. And it must have been like a month before quarantine because I bought some books of authors I liked. I'm like, oh, there they are. And I bought them. And I'm so glad I had them. <laughs> <laughs> So I had the money hand during quarantine. <laughs> okay, so that's good. All right, so then that will, so there's nothing else further then for us to, to talk about as far as the bylaws or the memorandum of understanding because we can do a little bit of work on that between now and June and then send that out to everybody to look at. Yep, so if yeah. I'm updating, I just want to make sure I have my timeline clear, like hopefully for the June meeting because just so I can update like Patty or Nancy on status. Hopefully at the June meeting, you guys will have a draft for you guys to talk about. So maybe say by July, there's gonna be a draft for us to see. Yeah, cause that'll be talking with, yeah. so what about Kate as far as the borough? Then? At what point in time do we share with Kate what we are drafting? I think even after your June meeting, I think if you guys are like, okay, these are the changes, we think this is ready. I think it can be shared with Kate at that point because she okay. clearly can say, you know, well, this okay. this might be a red flag or that and then send it back. There might be a little bit of sending it back and forth till we come up with a consensus. Okay. That makes perfect okay. sense. Yeah. I think July is reasonable. Yes, awesome. that would be great. Oh my gosh, we're going to celebrate. <laughs> so badly want to have this done. I'm so excited. I know. Oh, my note, I wrote awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully by then, maybe we can be six feet apart and we can actually, you know, <laughs> celebrate or <laughs> see yeah. one another in person. <laughs> that's great. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. Okay, does anybody else, do anyone have any questions on anything else on any of the reports or any other comments? Because I think we can wrap it up at this point. I don't think we have much more to discuss. I think you're right. Nothing else? I hear I hear crickets, that's all I hear. <laughs> yep, good. Okay, well that's good, so then we can adjourn. We just need a motion to adjourn the meeting. I move to adjourn. Thank you, Deb. And we don't, do we need a second, a second to adjourn? A second to adjourn? I second. Okay, my, my husband is trying to second. He cannot second. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the kitchen. I'll second. It's not private. <laughs> <laughs> it's not private. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys were like hooking up like uh, Thanks, money. Well, good. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. you guys. Thank Stay you. well, everyone. everyone. Thank you. That's great. And we'll talk to you all again soon. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Bye.